Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Welcome to Old Paramus Reformed Church, both on YouTube and Facebook for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We'll have a simple service once again of music, message, and prayer. Leading us in worship will be Pat Yatsko, Bill Roper, and me, Reverend Miller. Our hope and prayer is that you'll feel God's love and grace around you as you worship with us. And so I encourage you to find a quiet place within your home or wherever you may be and begin to center yourself as we prepare for worship and we'll allow the prelude to uh, all the worries and the clutter in our minds to just go away as we begin to worship God. Let us worship. Lord, we confess that we have often refused the gift of your Spirit 
Content in our dimness, we shrink from your light. Comfortable in our coolness, we withdraw from your fire. We would be moved, but carefully. We would feel, but mildly. We would seek your face, but dimly. Forgive us for begrudging the coming of your spirit or for accepting your fire only to smother it selfishly. Forgive us and visit us again. We pray now in Jesus' name, not for warm thoughts, but for burning hearts. For there is much that we must see and much that we must do. Amen. And now hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ Jesus. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in powers, power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And now hear what our Lord says about the law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments sing all the law of the prophets. Amen. Our gospel lesson is found in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. As we prepare our hearts and our minds to hear God's word, let us pray. God of our present trouble and promised triumph, open our eyes to see you in the midst of our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful works and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here our gospel lesson, Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, you O Christ. Christ. Now Jesus wants to get us, wants us to get into the boat. Wow, what an amazing journey or walk so far. I mean, I can't believe Jesus was able to feed 5,000 people with such little bread. And look, I still have a bunch, a bunch of bread left over. And now he wants to get us to get in the boat. I'm glad I brought my towel because someone might get wet in the boat. So we have to get in this boat, go in the sea, and, and Jesus needs more alone time. He's going to go up in the mountain and pray, and he, he's going to dismiss the crowds all by himself. I wonder what he's going to say to them, and what they're going to think as they leave. But, all right, Jesus, don't be pushy. We're getting into the boat. Let's get into the boat. Oh, 
Whoa, this boat ride is choppy and windy. The wind's against us. And I might be sick. No, I might be sick. And man, I can't even see the shore anymore. Matthew, can you see the shore? We are so far out there. Oh, this is taking forever. Oh, finally. The sun is coming. It's morning. I cannot wait to get out of this boat. What? What is that coming towards? Oh, it's a goat! Oh, I can't believe I watched all those horror movies when I was a teenager. Freddy Krueger, Poltergeist. Oh, he says it's Jesus? Make Peter go to the front of the boat. He can deal with that. Peter's getting out of the boat? Wow. Nice job, Peter! He's walking up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's sinking. He's sinking. Oh, Jesus is saving him. Jesus is saving him. They're getting in the boat. The storm is gone? You are the Son of God. All hail the power of Jesus' name. I hope we get off the boat ride soon. Wow, what an adventure. Now, between you, me, and the dock post here, this walking, it just, it's just the second day, and it's been amazing. And I still struggle. I don't know exactly what to do in these circumstances. I doubted that we had enough food to feed 5,000 plus women and children. I was just scared about a ghost coming at us, and it happened to be Jesus. I wasn't even brave enough to go out like Peter. I mean, we just saw Peter. He kind of nailed it, and he kind of failed it. Clearly, Peter is kind of rising to the top of as the best disciple, it seems. But he certainly isn't perfect, you know? Jesus... I mean, I wonder, I mean, why do we give Peter such a hard time for sinking? I mean, he at least went out of the boat onto the water, and Jesus did say he had faith. He happened to say little faith, but he did say faith. So Peter had this little faith. And I wonder, I wonder if that little faith is enough. Is this little faith going to be enough to carry Peter and all of us through. I wonder if Peter, if Jesus can build the church upon Peter. I'm, I'm pondering this, but maybe Peter's going to become the rock that Jesus builds his church on. I'm just floating it out there, you know, just as an idea. Pun intended. Little faith. Is little faith enough? And then, you know, we're, we're seeing that Jesus is something more than, than just a prophet. Son of God, that relationship with God, able to change the storm and to walk on water. You know, I love worship like we see here in the church and we weekly come and we, we, we there's something powerful in that that makes our schedules and puts a rhythm in our life, but the disciples and I, when we were on the boat, we just burst into worship because we were so amazed. And there's something about worshiping all the time, not just when we come to church, but in all circumstances, when we're amazed and we're blessed, we should sing praises. When we are scared, we can lament. Or when we're troubled, we can lament. All those things can build our worshipful life. It doesn't just happen in a sanctuary, but can happen in a boat, on a walking trail, out in a field where there's 5,000 people and we just break bread and everyone is filled. So worship all the time. You know, we're, we're supposed to follow Jesus, we're walking with Jesus, and we're supposed to become like Jesus. How are you feeling about that? I'm overwhelmed. You know, 
Jesus continues to show that we need to be quiet with God. And he's done this twice. He's feeding and curing and has compassion for all sorts of people. So in our lives, we should have compassion for all sorts of people. Jesus trusts God and trusts this mission he's on or this journey, and we need to trust too. So far, I'm O for two when it comes to trust. I didn't trust there was enough bread. I didn't trust that Jesus was coming on the water. Somehow, when we're becoming more like Jesus, there's a lot of trust there. Hmm. Not sure what's happening or what will come on this journey. I do know one thing. I can't wait to get off this boat. It looks like the land's coming and, and we'll see what's next. Maybe we feed more people. Maybe Jesus heals more people. Maybe he gets in an argument or two and yells at people. We'll just have to wait and see. But I know we're called to walk with Jesus, so let's continue our journey. In August, we're working on really silent prayer. And last week I mentioned how, you know, silence can be a, a difficult a difficult thing to do for some of us. And so we've been putting that into our prayer of intercession. And so how we do it is we begin with silence and we just are in God's presence. And then we silently lift up prayers and then we'll conclude with lifting up the words Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to quiet yourself. It's hard to center yourself and to get all those thoughts out of your mind. And so one of the practices we're going to do um, today is Pat's going to play a line or two uh, music to kind of center us. And then we'll be quiet and then we'll quietly lift up prayer and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Gracious God, we have come before you just as we are. We have 
sat silently with you. We have lift up silently our prayers, our groans, our moans. Only the Spirit can intercede on our behalf. And now we lift up the words your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is 379. My hope is built on nothing less. Let us sing to God. Amen. Mm -hmm.